My name is KT. I've been selling on Amazon for almost three years. In the past month, my Amazon store has done about $300,000 in revenue, resulting in over $40,000 in net profit. And I'm going to go over five things that I wish I knew when I started selling on Amazon that would have helped me tremendously. And I'm going to share that exactly with you. The first and maybe the most important thing is that this is not a business for the weak minded and also for those who have a weak stomach. It is not for you going into this business. I did not realize how many things that I would have to adapt to. Now, let me go a little deeper into this. So we're selling brand name products. So these are brands that we don't own anytime a brand can go and remove all the sellers from Amazon. They can say that I'm the brand owner and I'm the only one that should be allowed to sell my products and they can kick everyone off using methods like transparency codes, which are codes that they put on their products in order to sell these products on Amazon. You have to actually put the code information, which you don't have. So basically it's a way to block you from selling their products. And that's just one of the methods they do. And this is stuff that happens all the time as brands sometimes just say, I want to be in charge on Amazon and no one else should. And they kick everyone else off. I've lost thousands of dollars doing this stuff. And that's the reason why I'm saying it's not for the week. Like, yeah, I've made hundreds of thousands of dollars in profit, but I've also lost tens of thousands of dollars on the positive end. This has not happened often. It's only happened to me a few times selling on Amazon. And another thing is that when I'm selling these brands, it's like, I don't have to do any marketing or any ads or anything like that. So it's an advantage for me to just go get a product from a brand and start selling it and making money from it the next day, rather than building it up and developing it and running marketing campaigns, all that stuff. So there's pros and cons, you know, we're not doing all of that. We're able to print cash quite fast but also comes with the risk of these brands shutting us down. Now let's go to the second thing that I wish I knew before I got started selling on Amazon. You have to spend a lot of money to make a lot of money. It's obviously going into it. I knew I was reselling products. Thing is, I didn't realize how much of a volume game it was. I just assumed that for every dollar I spent, I could make a dollar, which is hundred percent ROI, but that's not what we're doing here. We're spending in a good case scenario, we're spending a dollar to make a dollar 30 cents. We're spending $100,000 to make $30,000 in profit, which is, you know, $30,000 in profit is great, but you're spending a lot. $100,000 is a lot to spend. And that's definitely one thing I wish I knew going into it because I was really scared to go in deep and spend a lot of money in the beginning. I had to ease my way into it, which took a lot of months to get into. And this leads to my third thing. Number three, reinvesting your profits back into the business. This is extremely important. And someone who does this is going to be far more successful than someone who does not. And instead they spend their money or they just keep it there saved. If you really want to kill it with this business model, once you start making some sales and some making some profit, you want to reinvest the majority of that into the business. Yeah. Depending on your situation, you might need to spend on some of your personal stuff. For me personally, all I would do is I would make sure I have enough to cover my car, my rent, and then enough for food. And then other than that, I wasn't really buying anything or doing anything and just reinvesting everything I had back into the business. The first time I touched a 10 K profit month, I reinvested about $8,000 of that. So 80% for a while, I was reinvesting 80 to 90% of my profits back into the business. Yeah. I know like you might think I'm a spender because I buy all these watches and stuff like that now, but I honestly was not buying really anything for over a year. I was reinvesting a lot back into the business. Number four, another underrated topic. You got to pay close attention to your logistics in the back end of your business. This is your shipping, your warehouse, anything that comes with storing inventory, moving your inventory around and getting your inventory into Amazon as fast as possible. The goal is getting all of your inventory into Amazon as cheap and as fast as possible. In the beginning, it's less important. It's more important to just find profitable products. But as you start to scale your business and you start to have more expenses such as prep costs, whether you're using a prep center or you're prepping stuff yourself, you want to figure out how much it's costing you to get your stuff prepped and shipped out to Amazon. You want to make sure you find that out after calculating it's on average 30 cents per unit to get my stuff prepped. And the reason why it's low in my opinion is because my team is very effective at getting stuff into Amazon. They work very fast. So we're able to get 
a lot of stuff prepped in a short amount of time. So that's if you're doing your own prep, you wanna make sure you have that accounted for. But if you're using your prep center, make sure you're getting good rates, you know, a dollar and under per unit is preferred. Lower your prep costs, the more products you can sell. For example, I sell stuff that costs $9 that would yield me before any prep cost about a dollar and 50 cents in profit. And then after all of my prep and shipping, it's about a dollar and 20 cents around that area. And yeah, that's not a lot, but if I sell a thousand units of that product, which I do for many different products, that's a thousand dollars in profit right there. But the difference between my operation and someone else's operation who their prep cost is over a dollar, they won't be able to sell that product because they won't be able to make any money. If they're spending a dollar and 50 for prep, they're making zero dollars on the listing that I'm making a dollar 20 on per unit. Once you're already profitable and you have a lot of different products that you're selling, you wanna make sure that your stuff is not sitting in your warehouse or your house, you know, for more than five days or something like that because the faster you get your stuff in, the faster you turn your inventory, which is the faster you make your money. And that's just the name of the game right there. Low shipping costs, low prep costs, inventory into Amazon as fast as possible and all that compounds and you'll end off the year with a lot of profit. Number five, and this one is very big. Keeping your eyes on your numbers. This may seem like it's something easy and not that, that difficult, but a lot of stuff can go under the rug. And a few examples of this are damaged inventory, lost inventory, reimbursed inventory from returns to customers. All of this, if you don't pay close attention to it, you may not notice it. An easy way to keep track of that that I use is third-party companies such as Sellerbench. These are companies that go and seek reimbursements for damage, lost inventory, FBA shipments that Amazon miscounted units on, all of that, and they deal with all that for me. I used to do that myself. I would spend time on every single Sunday about an hour just opening up cases for inventory that was lost or damaged. It happens quite often. It's pretty important that you keep your eyes on that, whether it's you keeping your eyes on it, creating cases through Amazon, or a third-party company doing it for you. More expenses that you may not be noticing are expenses such as credit card interest that can creep up on you, labor costs of employees, equipment such as poly bags, tape, that you use to prep your products and get them shipped out to Amazon. For accounting, you wanna make sure that you use Sellerboard. Every expense that is on my business is on one credit card connected to one bank account. It's all interconnected and I just input my expenses from there onto Sellerboard, the expenses tab in there, and all of my expenses are tracked and Sellerboard basically is able to track all of the money and all the transactions on your Amazon account, all the returns, everything that goes on in your Amazon account is tracked through there. Everything that goes on outside of your Amazon account, you wanna make sure you track that and you input it into your seller board software so that everything associated with your Amazon business is tracked correctly. So these in total were the five things that I wish I knew before I got started selling on Amazon. And click this video that's gonna pop up right here to learn how exactly I became a millionaire with Amazon FBA. The video is gonna pop up right there so I hope you liked this video. I hope you found it valuable and I'll catch you on the next video. Make sure to like and subscribe for the next post. I'm gonna have a lot of students that I brought on and they skid up their Amazon stores. So I'm trying to provide as much as I can. Stay tuned.